lot of friends from a commerce background today faces a challenge in how to read an accounting standard or a reporting standard under IFRS index or any other gap generally accepted accounting principles accounting standard or a reporting standard is not a novel or a storybook which makes the subject interesting you may fall asleep within few minutes after starting reading the accounting standard today we are going to see how to read an accounting standard how the accounting standard is structured what all principles we need to understand from an accounting standard there has to be an objective or a motive behind reading an accounting standard how to read a reporting standard or an accounting standard for that first we need to understand structure of the accounting standard or a reporting standard mainly under ifrs similar thing is adopted under indices and under under other gaps also there would be similar structure of an accounting standard which is designed by the standard setting body first part is text of ifrs the text of ifrs it may be ifrs is ifric or sics it also contains the text of the conceptual framework it is the bare text which may be in a plain text or in a bold format so the bold format provides you the main principle of the accounting standard and plain text provides you the supporting information or supporting guidance which is with respect to the main principle how do we interpret an accounting standard so whenever anybody or any reference book provide you any kind of interpretation is it their own interpretation no the interpretations are also are part of the accounting standard so part b is the illustrative examples and implementation guidelines so any particular provision has been explained by way of an illustrative example and by implementation guidelines how to implement that provision which is mentioned under part a these two parts are extremely important in order to how to implement that accounting standard or reporting standard and third part which is part c which contains basis of conclusion it also has uh, the practice statements so basis of conclusion is the process followed by the standard setting body why determining particular accounting provision or why determining particular accounting treatment with respect to any of the item in the financial statements so it provides us the objective it provides us the background and the uh, methodology of thinking of a standard setting body and coming on to a particular conclusion with respect to any specific accounting provision so these are the three parts which is a structure these three parts are available on the isb website you can purchase it and then you can start reading the accounting standards now even after these three principles are with a three parts with us how to read them what all principles generally we get from an accounting standard is very important again as i said earlier it's not a story book there has to be an objective or motive behind reading an accounting standard so this objectives becomes you know the principles provided for these objectives so now see the one by one the principles which are provided by the accounting standard to us number one is the recognition principle we are going to look at a good example on what these principles are and how to look at these principles first is a recognition principle which is a foremost principle when to recognize when to account for any transaction in the financial statements very much important once we have decided to record this transaction in the books of accounts at what amount it should be measured initially and then on a subsequent reporting day how that will be carried forward if at all it will be carried forward on the reporting day at what amount it will be carried forward so second principle is a measurement principle which is subdivided into two initial measurement and subsequent measurement presentation principle where that line item with respect to that transaction will be presented in the financial statement it may be in income statement statement of profit and loss account and other comprehensive income or it may be in the balance sheet or statement of financial position 
where and how do we present that? We are going to look at it, how to present it. The recognition, similarly, there is a timing for introducing a line item or a transaction in the financial statement. In the same manner, there is a timing to take out that line item from the financial statement. We call it as a de-recognition principle, when to de-recognize any particular asset or liability from the financial statement. We need to understand that. And last is a disclosure principle. Not everything can be understood from the numbers, the numerical information. So we need to have supporting descriptive information, which is the disclosure. So financial statements are prepared with an objective to provide true and fair financial position and performance of the business to the users of financial statements, that is investors, other stakeholders like government, employees, etc., vendors. So these are all users of financial statements. To all of them, we are required to present true and fair picture of my financial performance and my financial position as on particular day. In order to do that, I need to prepare financial statements. So there has to be some consistency in preparing the financial statements so that consistency will be maintained with only with the help of these principles mentioned in each reporting standards. So each reporting standard will provide us all these principles. So accounting standard are supposed to be read with the help of these principles. When to recognize the transaction, I'll come back to uh, the one example, a quick example. If you see here, let's say there is a revenue recognition. Now, a lot of times there is a question and debate between entity auditors or, you know, uh, other stakeholders, like, let's say, marketing heads. When to recognize the revenue? Marketing heads commission is dependent on the revenue. But revenue can't be booked based on what marketing head says. It needs to be looked at as per the financial reporting standard, accounting standard. So the accounting standard with respect to revenue will explain when to recognize the timing. See, accounting entry is not important at this point of time. We are expected to know the accounting entry. So we know what is the accounting entry for the revenue. It may be cash or bank or receivables, debit and credit will be revenue. But when that accounting entry needs to be passed in the system, that is extremely important. We call it as a recognition principle. We call it as a recognition principle. So this is my recognition principle. When? When to recognize the transaction? Goods are dispatched on 30th of March. My year end is 31st of March. However, goods will be accepted by customer only on 10th of April subsequent year whether to recognize this revenue on 30th of March or it should be deferred to be recognized on 10th of April. That is the recognition principle. That will change the day. Law of uh, revenue transaction takes place at the end of the year, fag end of the year. And entity may not recognize all of them because the transaction is not yet complete. So when it will be considered as complete, it is provided in the revenue recognition related standard and the recognition related principle will provide us this guidance. So we need to understand that. Second is at what amount revenue should be recognized? What all items should be considered as a part of the transaction price or the total amount of consideration? What all items should be excluded from that? So this is called as a measurement. Revenue is a PNL related item. It will not be carried forward in subsequent years. So it does not involve any subsequent measurement. It will have only initial measurement. Then how do we present it? It will be presented either as revenue or other income because there is a difference between revenue and other income. Other income or income is a broader concept which includes revenue, but revenue is income which is earned from the operating activity. So it has a specific meaning. So presentation has to be under revenue. So this is called as a revenue. So this is called as a presentation. This presentation, can it be presented gross or it has to be presented net of expenses? So this is again another important. Otherwise, there will be differences of practice which will be followed by number of entities. Some will present net, some will present gross. You will not be able to compare being an investor. And that is why there is a principle 
that revenue has to be presented gross. I'm just giving you an example. But where that principle has been given in the accounting standard, in this 115 or IFRS 15 revenue from contracts with customers. Now, this is the third principle. This is the third principle. Fourth principle, uh, principle will not be applicable of a de-recognition because this will not be carried forward. This is a PNF related item. So de-recognition principle will not be applicable in case of revenue. However, disclosures are important. Revenue, what all activities entities undertake to earn this revenue? Is it sale of goods, sale of services, construction contract, or something else? So this requires additional descriptive notes. We call it as a disclosure requirements. So this is the last principle of disclosure. This is what accounting standard provides us. It's not the accounting entry, as I said, is important. What is important is this five principles. So tomorrow, if you have any question with respect to when to recognize, at what amount to be measured, where it to be presented, then lastly, what are the disclosure requirements with respect to revenue? When it comes to asset, we will be able to apply all the five principles. Again, same accounting entry or accounting address is not, accounting standard does not provide you what is the accounting entry. That is gone. We are expected to know the accounting entries. When it is to be recognized, property, plant, and equipment. So property, plant, and equipment, which is accounted in the financial statements, on which date we are supposed to recognize. I may start constructing the property, plant, and equipment of fixed asset in-house. It may take three months to complete it. On which date I should recognize this as my asset recognition principle. Okay, at what amount initial measurement I may incur many expenses to purchase that asset or to construct that asset in house, but then which expenses I should include as a part of the initial measurement is provided as a part of initial measurement principle under IS 16 or in the 16 property plant and equipment. Where do I present it? It's my property plant and equipment. It should be presented as non-current asset. Correct? It should be presented as non-current asset. This non-current asset, this balance is a carrying value as on the reporting date. How this carrying value is supposed to be carried out or calculated is the subsequent measurement. So this is called as a subsequent measurement principle. Whether to be depreciation to be provided, at what rate depreciation to be provided, over which or what life that asset is to be depreciated, whether asset is to be tested for impairment or not. So all these questions will be answered in this section of the accounting standard, subsequent measurement. All right. De-recognition. Again, this principle is applicable for PPE. Once the asset is there, it may have certain value. It may not, it may have a zero value. Carrying value may be zero, but I'm still using it. When to de-recognize? Once I sell it off. So this is just an example. So this principle, when to be recognized and upon the recognition, if there is any gain or loss on sale of that asset, where it has to be recorded. So these aspects are provided in a de-recognition principle of index 16 or I 16 property plant and equipment. And lastly, again, descriptive information. Descriptive information is disclosure notes. Again, we have seen that this is a non-current asset. So this presentation principle is also there. So five principles. Recognition, when to recognize, at what amount is to be measured initially and then subsequently. Then, where it is to be presented, where it is to be de-recognized, what if there is any income or loss or gain or loss on sale of that asset. Lastly, what are the disclosure requirements? These are the five principles which any of the accounting standard provides in these three sections which we had seen earlier. What are those three sections? One, bare text of the reporting standard, illustrative examples and implementation guidance, and third is a basis of conclusion. So any type of interpretation provided in any reference book is coming out of this three guidances, three sections, part A, part B, part C of the uh, IFRSS. Similar thing is adopted under index, except the basis of conclusion, we have adopted everything. Now under ICAI website, you will be able to download application guidances and bare text of each of the standards.
correct or in desk and also for ifrs you will be able to download the implementation guidance and basis of conclusion okay so this guidance is freely available now you can start reading the accounting standard on this note okay if you have any questions you can write to me at info at the rate film for consulting dot in subscribe to our film for consulting youtube channel thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for subsequent interesting videos thank you